I'm a real estate millionaire, but that doesn't mean that every transaction has always made money. It also doesn't mean that I become a millionaire in the timeline I expected. And it doesn't mean that I haven't made mistakes along the way that have cost me tens of thousands of dollars. In this video, I'll share 10 things I wish I knew before becoming a real estate investor so that you can reach your financial goals faster than I did with fewer mistakes. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share some insights into what's going to happen for the remainder of 2022 in the real estate market. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're curious about being a real estate investor, but you may not have made that leap yet. If that is you, I want to encourage you to go for it. Real estate investing has literally transformed my life and I went into it very green. I didn't know anything about being a real estate investor. I don't come from a family of real estate investors and I didn't have a mentor along the way until much later in my real estate investing journey. So my hope is that by laying out these 10 items that I wish I knew before becoming a real estate investor, I can inspire you to take the leap if you're unsure. Let's dive in. Number 10, you don't have to have money to be in real estate. There's a misconception that you have to have money to make money in real estate, which is true, but it doesn't have to be your own money. You can build a very successful real estate investing business with what we call OPM, other people's money. So if lack of money is what's holding you back from being a real estate investor, it's not a prerequisite. The same goes for lack of time. If you are someone who doesn't have a lot of time to dedicate to real estate investing, you just need to focus on the strategies that do not require a lot of time. We call these passive investing strategies and there are many to choose from. If you're unsure of what these are, I teach them all in my masterclass, more on that a little bit later. Number nine, how you buy your properties is very important. If you're buying and owning properties in your personal name, you're going to have to have some limitations at some point. Most lenders will have a cap on how many properties you can own your personal name and get financing on. So having a corporation to purchase real estate in might be helpful. At the same time, you don't necessarily need to rush into setting up a corporation because you may not need it and it will be an additional cost and more challenging to acquire financing. So on this, I always default to the professionals. Talk to your lawyer, your accountant, and your mortgage broker about when it makes sense to set up a corporation and start purchasing properties inside of a corporate structure. Number eight, you will most likely get sued at some point. I know this sounds daunting and it's never fun to be in a lawsuit, but whenever there are large sums of money at stake, these are usually areas where lawsuits happen. It doesn't even have to be a good reason for someone to sue you. For example, we firmed up a property last year that was on the open market and two weeks later, we got sued for trying to buy that property. What we didn't know was that the deal before us went bad and the previous buyers were unhappy that the deal fell apart. So they sued everyone involved in the next transaction as a way to get the sellers to prioritize the issues that they had with the previous deal. They didn't even know my name and they sued me. They called me John Doe in the lawsuit. Even though the suit was unwarranted and outrageous, if you ask me, I still had to hire a lawyer to defend me. Number seven, you can always get financed it's just a matter of how much it's gonna cost you. I hear people saying they can't get any more financing for rental properties. This is 100% untrue. You can always get financing. What they should be saying is I can get financing for my next property, but it doesn't make financial sense for the project. If you're hoping to build your real estate portfolio with only institutional A lenders, which are the big banks in Canada, you will at some point stall. If you are looking to grow your portfolio, you will need to look at not only A lenders, but B lenders, private lenders, hard money loans, vendor takebacks, and raising private capital. These will allow you to scale and grow your business without the need for a conventional lender. Number six, a positive landlord reference is not always a good thing. I've called landlords for a reference for a tenant and that landlord has given that tenant a glowing review. Not because they were a model tenant, but because they didn't want that tenant in their property anymore. So relying on a previous landlord reference without asking the right questions can be very detrimental. In full transparency, I have have also done this. Now, I'm not gonna pass off a nightmare tenant to another landlord, but if a tenant is problematic, then I'm going to be happy that they're moving out and will give them the necessary recommendation to do so. Before we get to the top five, I've got some exciting news. My new and improved real estate investing masterclass is now live. This is the most comprehensive real estate investing training on the market today. Whether you're just getting started as a real estate investor or you've got an existing portfolio of properties and you're looking to take things to the next level, this masterclass will help you get to that next level. 
There are over 30 modules covering everything from how to use other people's money in real estate to properly screening and placing tenants. You'll also get access to my team of professionals, various spreadsheets and analyzers I use in my business, and the best part, you also get three months of live group coaching with me for additional support. Check it out at darrenvoros.com. Use the promo code YouTube for $200 off. Number five, trust but verify. Anytime you're dealing with a potential partner or a service provider such as a lawyer, an accountant, a bookkeeper, a mortgage broker, a real estate agent, or a fellow investor, you should always, by default, trust them but at the same time verify. I've met many people in the industry who are extremely gifted with convincing people that they are good people, but it turns out that they are What's the word? Oh yeah, criminals. So before going into any partnership or dealing with any kind of service provider, do your homework and make sure that their reputation is solid. Trusting your gut instincts is not ideal because people who are professional con artists know how to manipulate you in a way that you could probably never see it coming until it's too late. And I know what you're thinking, all of this will never happen to me. Trust me, unless you're doing your due diligence on people, this will happen. Number four, embrace technology. There are so many great pieces of software available today to support the real estate investing industry. While you can build everything out in a spreadsheet or even on your notepad, I would suggest getting on board with technology as soon as you can. Some of my favorite pieces of software I use are for deal analysis, property management, content creation, and project management. For a list of some of my favorite softwares in the real estate investing space, check out my list in the description below. Number three, real estate is not get rich quick, but it is building wealth over time. Real estate investing is and has been proven to be the most lucrative investing strategy of all time. 90% of millionaires have created their wealth through real estate investing, which is a pretty impressive stat, but what it doesn't tell you is how long it takes to become a millionaire for some. The majority of investors that I know have taken a long approach to real estate versus a very quick line. And if you haven't heard this expression, real estate is not about timing the market, it is about time in the market. This is absolutely true. Number two, build out a solid team. You cannot do this all by yourself and the sooner you realize that, the better off you'll be. There's a great book called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. If you haven't read it, I suggest getting a copy and reading it as quickly as you possibly can. This book lays out how effective it can be to find people who are experts at what they do and hire them. And then you can focus on sticking to what you do best. I have a solid team of people around me that I rely on every day and I'm getting better and better at outsourcing things that while I can do them myself, I can't scale a business if I'm trying to do everything. So find your who that you need for a certain task and spend your time and energy on sourcing that person versus spending time and energy learning how to do something yourself. This is a constant struggle in my business because I'm a bit of a control freak, but if you can master this, there's no limit to what you can do in business and in real estate. And the number one thing I wish I knew before becoming a real estate investor is that real estate investing is not easy. Real estate investing requires work even if you are truly a passive investor. You'll still need to vet the opportunity and the people who are providing it for you. Now, I don't wanna scare you off because although real estate investing is not easy, it can be simple if you build a system and you follow that system to a T. You will come up against adversity as a real estate investor if you're in the market long enough. The real estate market is cyclical, it moves in a circle. So if you've only experienced uptimes as a real estate investor, be ready down times are coming. And the best real estate investors can make money in all cycles of the real estate market, but no one ever said it would be easy. Be okay to put in the work and you will be rewarded for your time and energy as a real estate investor. As promised, I wanted to share what you should know for the remainder of 2022. The market is going to be volatile for the next few months. With rising interest rates and falling real estate values, you will either have the chance to wait to see what happens or dive into some potential opportunities. The market has been red hot almost entirely across the country, but that's going to change. So get in a position where if you see a great opportunity, you can pounce on it. For those of you waiting for a turn in the market, uh, it's here. Don't miss it. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What is one thing you wish you knew before becoming a real estate investor? Or what is one thing you're curious to know about it if you're just getting started? Leave that in the comment section below. If you have any real estate investing related questions, you can leave those in the comment section as well. If you're not already doing so, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.